This is a corporate case. These types of cases often involve a company executive collaborating with or conspiring with a competitor. Corporate surveillance cases can demand lots of surveillance hours, so figuring out a good surveillance position and analyzing the environments that the subject will be coming and going from is essential. These cases are all about who the subject is meeting with, talking to, mailing things to, and so on. I prefer to work these cases with a second investigator. Both investigators follow the subject and after the subject meets someone, one investigator continues to follow and the other investigator gets onto the person that the subject met and figures out his or her identity. Then catches back up to the follow on the subject. I didn't have the luxury of a second investigator on a corporate case with a similar environment to this place, but I got the job done with very limited subject information as the client did not even have an identifying photo or even a vehicle for the guy. Just a description and a condo address. This 75 year old business partner of my client who we call Mr. Blake had zero web presence and all I had was his name, age, height and the fact that he smoked. The smoking fact determined how I worked the case. Mr. Blake flew down here for a vacation at a friend's beach condo and it secured like Fort Knox both at the entrance and at each building and the parking underneath. The client had no flight info. A business competitor was also located nearby and my client suspected that Mr. Blake was collaborating in some way with a competitor. The client thinks that Mr. Blake will be driving either an unknown borrowed or rented vehicle so we have two massive beachfront buildings, no vehicle, no photo, and he could have been doing business either at the condo building or elsewhere. I had to solve the vehicle issue quickly as hundreds of vehicles come and go from this place daily. So this building has a couple things here that we're going to look at and we're also going to look at the setups, different vantage points at the exit and also from the beach side. So this is how I handled the case. All right, here's an aerial perspective of the buildings and there's the property. There's the public beach to the south and it's the building on the right that is where we're gonna do the surveillance. So we'll just rotate around the building. You can kind of see what we're up against here. This is all elevated, very high off the road because there's parking underneath these buildings and it's an entire platform at the base of the buildings that you can see there. And of course the ocean is to the left but now these apartments he's way up on a high floor that was given to me by the client thank goodness he had at least that information the arrow shows his entire balcony facing the ocean and how I determined where it was instead of having to go down to the city and get the floor plans and such I found that the condo below it, I could tell by the numeric that was below it, was for sale. I called up the agent and had them send me a little arrow as to where the condo was located on a photo. So I could figure out where the subject's condo was. Much easier than having to look at floor plans. So here's the beach, because I'm lining up the beach. I'm looking at the trajectory from the beach up to that condo, how far away I would have to get. The higher person is in a building, the further away you have to get. Here is uh, a larger area. You can tell there's the north. There is the condo right there, the arrow, and that is the bridge to the south. Now there also is a way to get onto the mainland to the north, and we have to pay attention to both of those. Here is a little closer view. There's the public beach again. Here is the public park. And there's some parking left at the public park there, which we'll look at uh, as well. So basically, that's the property right there that we're focusing on. Here's a closer picture. There's the building. And here is the entrance and exit. It's guarded. 
by a manned guard 24 7. Here is the entrance and exit to the underground parking that is located underneath these buildings. Uh, the two swimming pools, one is high on the kind of platform which looks like a high platform and then there's a low one. There's the parking and then there's tennis courts and playground and there's the beach. There's the center median. This is very important when we choose where to park. There is my car right there on top of the parking garage. Here is a uh, residential building. Here is a house, which driveway is directly across from the exit, but it's always occupied. And here are the two streets that are the closest. The property to the north is gated as well. It's guarded and it's too hard to get around. It's below the level that we would need to see across onto the subject's property. So I'm going to drive out here and come here. Here's the first spot that I'm going to look at. I'm going to park right here. There's a few parking spaces. And here's what it looks like from this vantage point. It's too far. We need to, on the first day, be able to see who's in each car coming out. And I'll show you why in a little bit. The second day it's not a bad spot, but not the best spot. But you can see the entrance and exit here really well, so you're compromising. There's the intersection, it has lights, so that also has to be taken into consideration. Very slow lights from that angle. And the center median's right there, which doesn't play in too much, uh, doesn't have too much effect for this setup position. So let's go north here with the car. And we're basically, you know, checking out the timing of those lights because that's very important. All the lights nearby get a timing for it. We're going to go up to a street that's even further north in the page here. Uh, I just want to show you why I didn't park here. It's too far. It's right where that van is to the left. Way too far. Here is... Um, a spot which is very good but very uncomfortable here we can actually see people as they come and go as they're driving or in the passenger seat the median doesn't come into play here really because person goes north it's easy person goes south it's easy so let's go further south here to another spot and this other spot I determine would be good after we determine the vehicle the spot we just left from was the best spot for eyeballing people through the front window. Another way to do this is with a remote camera. But here is the view and to the left is a, a bunch of cars there. The vantage point isn't good from there so you're looking diagonally across the street here to the north. And you can also see the entrance and exit to the parking garage very clearly from this position. So you get a good jump on who's coming out. The center median does come into play here. Um, especially if the person goes to the north. But let's try with the person coming to the south and see what it looks like. The red car is the subject's vehicle. And he's coming to the south. The median doesn't come into play. The light kind of comes into play here. You just have to watch it. You're not going to get tied up at the light. So it kind of determines how fast you come out or if you give the person a long leeway. So let's take the cars back to their original positions here and see if the subject turns and goes north. All right, the subject is going. Here's the median, and here's what you have to do. You have to pull the U-turn here. I'm trying to keep the subject in my mirrors, keep tabs of traffic, and pull the U-turn and get caught up. If it's very busy here, you might have a ton of cars in between you and the subject, which is difficult to get caught up. Here's another vantage point from the public parking lot. I did not like it at all. Too hard to get out. I mean, you can see the person. Maybe good if a two-man team was on this guy but 
definitely not a one-man team because this is what it looks like you see there's a lot of stuff blocking as well now just to take you back over to the parking garage right there just to show you what it looks like inside from a lower level obviously it gives you the best shade on a hot day but only good if you had two investigators and even then you'd have to come out very very quickly all right so we're here nice and early and uh, i've got stuff to go to the beach here i got my towel got my umbrella and we're gonna set up on the only angle that we can see his balcony We're going to have to get far enough out from the building where we can see onto his balcony and not just straight up. All right, so this is phase one. One is the ID shot. We need an ID shot of this, not just a glance at him way up on a balcony, but a fairly close up view of him. Uh, facial ID, anything that stands out. We need to be able to uh, record it so that we can compare it as people are leaving. There could be a number of gentlemen leaving from the exit to the community with uh, a similar look. Gray hair, etc. So we need to find things that set him apart from those men. And the only way to do that is to record the balcony. Not just using the camera as uh, a viewer but to actually record and that's what we're going to do here we're going to set it up so I brought a uh, an extra shirt here to put the camera on we could be here for quite a while laying down now it's kind of raining off and on so hoping that he comes out soon and the reason we're doing this of course as I mentioned before is the cigarette uh, what are the chances of this guy in someone else's place smoking inside and with a chance of him going all the way down to the bottom floor and out when there's balconies on every single condo. So we're going to get all set up here with uh, my Canon Vixia 72. Uh, the reason I like this camera, especially for unmanned stuff, is because it does not have the 12-hour cutoff like every other manufacturer does. It actually cuts off after 12 hours and then three seconds later comes back on, resumes recording. So we have to get set up here on the right balcony, counting down from the top, wiggling the camera into the sand to get a stable, a stable position, and then just uh, framing in that balcony just right, like that. And now we just wait. So most of the time here, I'm going to have to keep my eyes fixed on that screen and uh, not too far. Because, you know, the reason we're recording too, what if we were to come out real quick and go back in and it's our only chance to see him? So, not much of a chance to ID him if you're just using your eyes or just using the camera as a binocular, so to speak. There we go. We've got some action on that balcony. There he is. Okay, so freeze frame it. And there's the cigarette. Glasses, those are an identifying thing. The hair, the color, the hairline, and the watch. It's a very distinctive watch. So let's take a look at this watch here. It almost looks like it has two panels to it. And uh, there is another shot of uh, good facial identification. So we have to get out of here quickly and get back to the car. Because what if he were to have a cigarette and then go right back um, down to the parking garage and, and out for the day? All right, we're all dry now. It was quite a downpour there. So we've got sunny, rainy, sunny, rainy here throughout the day, probably. Um, I've got the camera here. I'm going to probably take some stills of the video so that we can see everybody that comes in and goes from there. And assuming that his vehicle does not have tint, uh, we should be able to get him leaving. Of course, if he has people coming here to meet him, then it may be a problem. But uh, so we're going to take the chance because he's not down here in Florida forever. So let's see what happens. So.
So far, we've watched about a dozen gentlemen come out with gray hair, roughly around the same age, and we've been able to look in every single car. So, what do we have here? Okay, good. Let's zoom in. It looks good so far. The glasses, the facial identification looks good. I don't see anybody else in the vehicle. There's the watch. Let's get a closer look at that watch because that will be the definitive thing. Freeze frame. Yep. That is the watch. So we have the watch, the glasses, the hair. It's all good. Now we can uh, start the follow and see where he goes. Let's go. Let's go.